here in Sweden, we believe not to rush things. We believe in playing local and making sure that you play with your friends, close to school, close to family, and that you take one step at a time. We don't put players in, in different levels too soon. We, we let them grow year by year, not chasing uh, wins, chasing to play against the best players too early. The other big part is that the communities are the owner of the rings. So it's not driven by companies that for every reason wants to, to earn money. So we try to keep hockey at a low cost as possible. And, and I think that's an important part in having as many players as possible trying hockey. Usually North American guys are usually um, seeing our Swedish guys as really good skaters. They can usually see when we have a, a European or especially a Swedish draft pick or something that comes into camp, we're usually really good skaters and uh, both defensemen and forwards are moving the puck really well. The biggest reason why I think we are actually successful in Sweden is the way we do the player development. So we have a training ratio of maybe three trainings for one game. And I think that's, that's the most efficient way of, of developing a hockey player. From a scientific point of view, it's, it's quite clear on what to do when. And you have the golden age of, of motoric and coordination development from when you hit puberty. And I think we optimize that age in a, in a very good way. You could make a comparison to, to uh, either building a, a, a go-kart or a Formula One car. If you use that age in the right way, focusing on skating, stick handling, passing, making sure the player can handle every type of technical issue in that age would, would make him have the possibility to reach a very high level. I would say the biggest asset that the Swedes have going for them is that they have a smaller geographical country, that they have a smaller population, and they can reach out to these people quicker and faster in the instruction area coaching. And they've done a fantastic job of breaking down the game from the youngest kids and teaching skill development and working on the fundamentals of the game. And then when they get into their early teenage years, they get into game situations which I think is the key to success in hockey. In Canada, the tendency seems to be more on game-based situations. The earlier they start playing games, the better and the more they enjoy it. And um, for me, when I see practices with seven, eight, and nine-year-olds in Canada, I wouldn't get away with that in this country. It'd be unacceptable and it would not be to the standards that the Swedes would want because they work very much on skill development and uh, we work very, too much on game situations and game development. Winning games in the beginning is not the most important. It, it's about setting every part of the development in, in where it should be. And I think that's, that's crucial. The reason I feel Swedish hockey still has uh, an edge over North American play is because the uh, actually less usage of ice during the off season and more um, focus on off ice training. Um, in North America, most rinks nowadays are private rinks, so rink owners are feeling the necessity to uh, make their sheets full all year round. So the implementation of uh, spring tryouts for teams used to be um, early uh, in the fall or late in the, in the um, uh, summer season. Back in the 70s, 80s and early 90s those rinks were closed and players would go out and play multiple sport therefore getting a lot better with their uh, reaction time. Most of the rinks we close uh, first of April and we'll make sure the players do other sports or if they do not do other sports we will implement that part of coordination training within our, our off-ice training and uh, making sure that uh, you can set the foundation from a motoric point of view, which is much easier without skates than, than with, with the skates on, because you get so much other parts as balance and, and the way you develop your skating. Everybody in Sweden at 13, 14, 15 has the skill. Now you take that skill and you move it on to the next level, and that's game development. And they do it the other way around in North America and I think the Swedes are right on the money. They got the idea. Now, the Americans have followed more of the European model 
and that's why it's growing so fast and producing so many players at such a high rate. The Canadians are producing players just on sheer volume. There's so many players and there's so many guys playing that it's just the elite rise to the top right away. When you go out in the ice with a 9, 9 10, 11 year old in Canada, uh, the coach is working on breakouts, power play, and all that stuff. When you go out and go practice with a Swedish kid, they're out there working on puck handling, puck protection, moving the puck to the right places, uh, their edge control when they're skating. And I think that the, that if, if you don't have a solid platform when you're playing the game of hockey, which is skating, then you don't you can't play the game at the level you need to be able to play at. You might have the biggest heart in the world, but you still got to be able to skate and play the game. And I think in Canada you'll find that uh, there's a lot of games and going to tournaments is really big in Canada. The kids love it, the parents love it. It's time out for everybody, but uh, lots of games, not so much practice time. Or over here in Scandinavia, and especially in Sweden, there's a lot of emphasis on player development and practice time, less emphasis on tournaments, less emphasis on games, until they get older. The game is so fast today and it's, uh, it's so much quick decisions out there, so how we usually work with the goal is, is that we want to create that environment where the goalies need to take really fast decisions and of course having the technique with them also, but that's, that's a secondary thing. Most important for, for our goal is to take the puck and then if you take it with the head or with the glove, that doesn't really matter for us. Well, hockey's changed a lot, mirroring a little bit of uh, soccer development across the world. Uh, we're trying to have the players play at younger ages in smaller areas. Um, that giving players more touches uh, and more opportunities. Um, before Sweden was the one that was uh, the forefront in that sector until uh, USA Hockey sort of jumped on the bandwagon a little bit and Hockey Canada. Uh, the US model called the ADM model, uh, which is, like I said, very similar to uh, the football model. Um, more touches, smaller ice surfaces, um, and therefore allowing the players to participate more.